Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with longtime tested family member, Johnny Fraser Allen. Hey everyone. This is Johnny's first trip to the cave. We have been shooting some videos today mm -hmm. and we are currently gonna talk about gnomes today. Well, it's just a little extra thing I could squeeze <laughs> into my suitcase. <laughs> okay. um, but I've been fascinated with garden gnomes my whole life. Um, a lot of that's probably, again, Back to the labyrinth with Hoggle being my favorite character. Yeah. Um, and he's called a gnome once in that movie, Other Times a Dwarf. Anyway, but um, <laughs> uh, I guess growing up as a small diminutive creature, um, I, you know, I felt at place with them. Yeah. But also, and I, you know, when you're a kid and you don't know, you don't, you can't really appreciate to the full level, you grow to grow to appreciate things. Basic store-bought garden gnomes look pretty cool as a kid. Okay. And then you grow up, and I still had a love of garden gnomes, but they looked a little hokey to me. But I still, the idea of a species, gnomes as a species, and what they do when you're not looking and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. I was always fascinated with it. And there's that beautiful gnomes book. Dude, that gnomes book came out when I was a kid. It came right? out when I was like, a, 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 I think, 10 or 11 years old. It's Hugh, Hugan? What's that? The, the author's name. I cannot remember. No, I feel bad about not remembering it, that. I remember it shifting me on axis, though. The idea of a book that took seriously as its subject. I still remember that um, that gnomes target spit. Like, that was one of the things they talked about in the book, is that if there's a lone leaf in the middle of the dirt, you'll often see a gnome will try and spit wow. to hit it. And it was like, that's a personality thing in the culture of gnomes. And I remember being like 11 and being like, that's cool. Well, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, it's taking something that was sort of hokey, but giving it that level of seriousness uh -huh. that I love. And so um, I've always wanted to do my version of gnomes. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm also obsessed with gaming miniatures and Dungeons and Dragons and Mordheim or whatever, whatever game I can get right. my painted characters onto a tabletop because sure. that's my favorite part. <laughs> and um, so, God, about six years ago, I started hand sculpting my version of what a, a garden gnome could be and this is where the guardian gnome came from and this is the first guy I did and then I just decided um, I work you know I, I've worked in the weta design room for so many years yeah. I, as much as I love to do my own stuff doing your own stuff is always so helpful when you've got a brief yeah. like you know Spielberg will give you a brief for what the BFG will be and I had to use Mark Rylance as a start-off point yeah. and and the BFG became what he was because of Mark Rylance you know of course. and so to give myself a start off point out of nothing, I decided I, I will do each guardian gnome as a class from Dungeons and Dragons. And, but that's all I'll use. And then so, what would a wizard garden gnome look like? And so, so this guy, um, his hat is a cognizant mushroom. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, sorry, I just need to let that <laughs> phrase sit there for a second. You don't have one of those yet? His hat is a cognizant mushroom. But, I totally believe that. And so I, 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 spent, I spent two and a half weeks sculpting each gnome, which is a long time to sculpt something, and when you're lost in your own crazy head while you're sculpting on autopilot, yeah, yeah. I come up with all this stuff. And so once the hat was a mushroom, oh, you put a face on it. And then, one, well, it's a face, what's he doing? Well, I thought, well, I like the idea that the hat actually is the wizard and this guy's just his ride. And so he, he really thinks it's all about him, he's but just he's just a, a transport. Hat, right? And so well, if, if he's a wizard, a wizard needs a hat, yeah. what would his hat be? So his hat's actually another little mushroom, but a real stupid one, you know? <laughs> and so what, what, what will make, and, and I always, for all of their mushrooms hats, I give them just two small um, concept elements because they come out so small. Yeah. So this guy's smoking a pipe and has a staff and a hat, that's what makes him a wizard. But his, his pipe is made out of a snail shell. I love the pipe out of the snail shell. Well, I, I found when I was designing creatures for the gloaming, I loved creating a world full of Characters, you know, with um, who are cognizant and have culture, but n none of them use this iron. But uh, the second there's any steel, you've got to you've got to cater into the fact that there's a mine and there's there's alchemy and right, and and right, right. or transmutation transmutation yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see fairy tale creatures using that stuff outside of maybe dwarves, right? Sure. And and so I, I really like the limitations that get put on me as a concept designer of how to make the things I want, but out of really rustic. Um, bare bones kind of caveman tech. Right, right. And so his backpack is woven out of flax. And I thought because he's a garden gnome and you know people don't like slugs in their garden, yeah. this guy actually uses slugs for his potion. Oh. So having this guy around your garden is helpful because he gets rid of all the slugs and snails. You know, so if this was to become a range, people might like that. There's one over here. A, and they're all crawling in his yeah, leaf cape. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. 
And and so I thought, oh. because also sculpting this was also about how do I um, how do I block up any recesses that would make it hard to mold. Sure, sure. And so, and so like this fairy has tiny little wings and tiny little arms, and I wanted a fairy on her shoulder. So you fold the wings back, you push the fairy onto him, and like where am I going to put these delicate arms that aren't just going to break off in someone's right, garden? Right, right. And so I thought. Oh. What if he's a really bad wizard and the fairy's trying to stop him from doing the spell? <laughs> and, and so you, as much stories as I can get in one tiny yeah, little sculpture. Yeah. And even his staff, like he can take out these stone slates with the with the code on it, and then he can base where he puts the abacus on on that, and that's kind of like um, part of the the you know MacGuffin whatever you yeah. want around his spell casting. And he uses slugs for that potion uh, for that spell. But the fairy has seen how good he is at magic before. He's like, no, oh, God, no. You know? <laughs> um, so that that's Sortington Ottersluis, who was um, one of he's a character that I got to play in a and d campaign, and I got to have him on the table while I played, and 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 got to experience him as a character. No. And um, so this is his miniature. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe how much detail you're able to get back into this miniature. Well, again, so um, this is my, this this is all scanned from this hand sculpture. This is um, this is so this is that. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Um, so right. obviously, with um, uh, with Mikey Gilbert, who who I art direct to do digital characters for um, the ranges I work on with printable scenery. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's the first and only artist I found who captures my sculpting style, but when I can, it just takes so long, I love to hand sculpt my own characters. And so sure. for, the, for the range of guardian gnomes, I've hand sculpted every character. And I wish I could have brought uh, all of them here, but in the suitcase with the other stuff we shot. But I did bring this guy. Um, so this, was, uh, this is the Artificer. <gasps> and so this is you. Um, so when it came time to designing the Artificer, which is one of my favorite classes, because that's the guy that makes everything out of nothing. And, but how does a gnome make everything out of no metal, no tools? Yeah. You know, look at your workshop, look what you, how does gnome Adam do that, right? <laughs> and so this is, a, this is a really gloomy, dark paint job, which I like, my, one of my, once a year, I teach a set and props course at the New Zealand Drama School. Yeah. And one of my students really wanted to paint your version of your gnome for you. Yeah. So this is painted by Jared. And um, which is it's it's a it's a better paint job. This guy's kind of lighter and more garden friendly. This is going to sit in a corner of your workshop and freak people out. But um, so Johnny. if I go through him like storytelling wise, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, <laughs> like your your all of your tools are actually different beaked gargoyles, and so that's it. You know. <laughs> oh, so they can uh, manipulate materials by eating them. Yeah, he's just holding his head and he's using him like a Dremel. You know. Oh my god. And so he's got his three, he's got his four main power tools, which are four different gargoyles. <laughs> um, and, and so you've got glasses, yeah. but I don't, they wouldn't have glasses no, in no. low tech world. Of course not. And so the way that his, his cognizant mushroom hat is holding his face, he's actually massaging your thinking, so he's massaging your brow. Oh, look at that, he is. But it forms the, the visual kind of recognition of you of wearing glasses, because it wouldn't look right otherwise. And um, luckily, you already look like a gnome, so that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Thanks, I think. <laughs> and he's got steel cap boots that are made out of um, the tops of acorns. <sighs> and then what I really liked here, his backpack is made out of a log, but oh my it God, folds it's out like, like a one of your toolbox. study toolbox. <gasps> And um, because I I love getting my sculpting tools out of my toolbox. I'm messy, but it's just something. It's like when I used to smoke a tobacco pipe. I didn't even really like smoking, but I loved the process of all the little things. Yeah, yeah, yep, And I yep, love the yep, process yep. of getting your tools out and putting you know, in the place and stuff. And and I know you do. And oh I, no, nothing makes me happier. And I got a lot out of um, reading your book, Every Tool's a Hammer, when you talk about knolling. And so I thought, well, I wanted to reflect that in this tiny little sculpt. And um, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know. I even and, and your your mushroom thinks he's an artificer too, and he's got his work belt and. <laughs> <laughs> He's got aspirations. I will say, Johnny's been here for a couple of days. We've been hanging out a lot and sharing lots of stories. And somehow, you all managed to keep this from me, knowing yeah. that this was going to happen. I am so blown away. Oh my god, so, I love the little case here that, whoop, that So that's your copy. <gasps> um, this isn't for you, I'll get you another one. But this, because this was painted, this whole range was, oh. um, again, like we've talked about so many times, how many doors um, Tested has opened for me in terms of the community. And two people that watched um, one of our other episodes, yeah. um, uh, Bunny and Ben Layton, um, this amazing 
uh, talented painters and I didn't realize, I was already following and drooling over their paint jobs on, yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> and one day they reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love to paint some stuff for you. Um, you should be doing a, a, a Patreon. They helped me set that up, which was amazing. But they, they just as friends painted this first lineup of uh, Guardian Gnome. So that's Man, the Artificer. We've their seen, paint job is We've insane. seen the wizard. Yeah. So this, um, we'll get you the, the photographs of these um, but for oh you to look at. God. That's the ranger. So <gasps> she, she nurses all the fallen animals. So she's got a uh, little squirrel and a hedgehog oh. in, her, in her bag. And so again, that's all, they're all hand sculpted at this size. I can't believe how much detail you're able to cram into these This things. is my favorite. This is the cleric. And he's got a little, um, mount. Uh, everyone has a little um, animal companion and a backpack that serves a function. So he's got a candle under a pot that is brewing his potion that his mouse is cutting up the mushrooms for. And his, his hat is like a little chef. Oh, it is! <laughs> it is little, like ratatouille. Yeah, and then I even I even put like a, all their staffs have faces and even the candle has a melting face on it. Because I'm sculpting it at this scale, it's, I can't resist not putting more yes, character sure. in there. And then so here's the bard. And so all of them, so his hat is made out of three mushrooms. One's playing a flute, one's playing a bagpipe, one's playing a uh, panpipe. And then he's got a cricket, which is doing its leg thing. And he's got a drum on his back. And then he, as he walks, it squeezes a frog. And, and he's got little things on his boots that make him jangle. So it's basically this one man kind of Tom Waits walking around band sort of dude, you know? You know Tom Waits lives up here in Northern California. Oh man. So <laughs> like, as I keep fulfilling all of my dreams, yeah. which I'm seen to do, right? Yeah. My ultimate dream is to have Tom Waits narrate the gloaming oh. because I based the troubadour on him. He, yeah. I mean, if, that's him tattooed to my arm, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's him as Renfeld in Bram Stokes Dracula. Oh I forget I had that because I was 20. <laughs> and so that's, the, uh, so that's the rogue. Yeah. And she's got a little mole that can jump inside this puppet as a diversion while she grapple hooks up the wall. Wow. Know? And then this guy was the barbarian. But he's a nice barbarian because he had to kill a crow that attacked him and he's got the skull for his skull. Oh, skeleton. it's a great. But he's, he's kept his nest full in chicks and is raising them, which means it, it gave it that kind of um, Odin look of having yeah, two little crows. Yes. But they had to be small babies because it's on a gnome, you know? Oh, they're beautiful. The basket with the baby in the back. And then this guy, this is the, well, she is the paladin. And um, I like the idea that. You know, gnomes are nomadic, so yeah. she's, she's got her baby oh on her back. Oh my god, that baby is one. That baby's amazing. And, and from that side angle, it's like a buddy cop pick. Yeah, and his totally. Pac his wooden pacifier looks like a cigar, like he's some grumpy old you know, hand in your badge. You know, Johnny. And um, yeah. So any ex any excuse. To, and so her um, her horns are stag beetles and stuff like that. And anyway, so those are the first eight. Um, I want to do um, at least thirteen to cover the main classes, but um. You got the wizard and the artificer here. So you're just a little over halfway through. Yeah, um, uh, we, we found we found a great uh, American-based company who's producing them in urethane and doing an amazing job. Um, so they'll, they'll ship really easily in America. And yeah, the the, the castings we got out are phenomenal because I'm really picky with that stuff as a gamer and a painter. I'll bet. And um, yeah, and and um, they they're gonna also be um, characters that um, pop up and are playable within the gloaming. Um, Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition modular content that um, I'm creating through uh, Wandering Monstrous, another company, and um, so you can see that the kind of places I build are perfect for guardian gnomes yeah, to yeah, inhabit. Of course, because um, I just love the forest and tree places, and yeah, and so that is just a, a fun little trip down Gnome Lane. And these also all of these are in the Weta Unleashed exhibition down Gnome Alley before you go into what they've replicated for my yeah. my study. Yeah. And then there's the big giant head of me that you've done a video on. Yeah. But no, all the gnomes are there as well. We made a wall for them. So. We will uh, we'll include links to all of this where people can come find this. Uh, Johnny, this is so thrilling. It is amazing. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And oh my God, I cannot even. I'm yeah, send like, us a pic of this in your garden. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I'm literally, he's gonna live <laughs> in our, in our, on our deck out in the garden. Nice one. Oh, dude. You're welcome. Beautiful. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> We will see you next time. Thanks for having me.